Greetings. This is not Inquisitor, and this is a video response to a request by uh, Rhaegar the Dragonborn, who asked me if I had the intention to do a review of Numenera characters option. I think he, he maybe wants to have a, an overview of the book maybe before buying it. So uh, <clears throat> so yes, uh, uh, I'm going to do a review of it right now. So um, I hope this review will give you an inside look inside the book content and um, and uh, well first thing first the book is uh, nearly a hundred page long maybe uh, exactly I'm not sure um, the majority of the content is about character creation and character advancement so you won't find technology or anything. It's it's a book very focused on, on characters. So the book begins with a chapter on uh, character type options. And the character types in Numenera are the Glaive, the Nano, and the Jack. And each of these character type have an uh, option in the core book. Except that in this book you have more to choose from. One thing interesting about the character types uh, options in this book is that they all uh, are treated equally. For example, the glaive have new ability uh, for its first tier. Uh, he got eight uh, new fighting moves and uh, the nano in the jacks also have eight new things. So each of these types were treated equally. So it's not a book about glaive more than anything else. Or. So glaives are, are uh, have new fighting moves uh, for the six tiers of their uh, advancement. For example, they have an ability uh, for tier one called the surging confidence. Uh, it costs the, the glaive uh, one point of speed I think and uh, the next time the glaive take an action to recover he may immediately do another action. So it's different little fighting move like that that they have added to the glaive type. The nano have new hesoteries and the jack uh, have new tricks of the trade and uh, from what I browsed through the book and read so far they look pretty nice, neat and, uh, and, and balanced so they are a nice addition to a, a character arsenal and of course these uh, new options for character types are available at any moment in the character's uh, advancement uh, toward the games through, through the games. So, uh, next you have uh, descriptors, new descriptors, and you have 40 new descriptors. That's quite a lot. Uh, for the most part, the recipe for the new descriptors resolve around, um, revolve around the concept of a negative aspect like in Fate. So you have um, descriptors like cruel, clumsy, and uh, most of these comes with inabilities. It's not something new uh, if you played any Numeneros at all, but uh, some players may or may not be encouraged or, or, or uh, have the preference for taking such descriptors but the really interesting thing about uh, these descriptors or negative descriptors are that they are giving bonus to 
and they are balanced with anything else and balance is really not an issue in Numenera anyways uh, so um, if you uh, <laughs> if you have a I don't know uh, an hesitation to take a descriptor like clumsy I would encourage you to, to give it a read and really uh, see um, what it is all about before saying no I won't uh, I won't play a clumsy character because there is some really interesting things in in there sure you have an ability but you have a lot of bonus too uh, for example I think I think the the clumsy character have a bonus to his uh, speed defense because of he, he's so clumsy <laughs> he trip on his feet while you you, you attack him and, and such and so forth <clears throat> so, um, uh, the, these new descriptors are really a appealing to the role player and in, in me, and, and I'm sure my players will uh, will uh, greatly appreciate uh, them. Um, in fact, we are uh, finishing our uh, Numenera campaign soon, and I'm sure we will uh, do another one, another short campaign this time, uh, just to try this, this book. And uh, one of my players actually uh, bought also this uh, this, uh, this this book. Um, then you have in the book location-based descriptors, and some of these are my favorite in the book. It's really like a bloody fantastic idea. Um, you, you don't want to be clumsy, you don't want to be smart or strong or you want to represent the archetypical citizen of a nation you have descriptors based on location like uh, Naveen or Ganic or Draulic for their respective nation of uh, Navarine, Gan and Draulis and you even, you even have some descriptors for the beyond and it's 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 fantastic it's really a fantastic idea I really um, personally I really enjoy um, regional background or uh, cultural background for uh, for some D2, d20 game and uh, this idea just really mesh well with uh, with Numenera if you want to play a, a character that is really a typical living person of a certain place uh, you probably have a descriptor for it uh, then you have uh, rash, racial uh, options for visitant, non-human race and mutants uh, the mutants uh, or mutations uh, they, they, they add quite a lot to it uh, what's already in the book because for those who don't know uh, you can play a mutant with the core book uh, but you have to uh, look like in the middle of the book and not at the beginning you have to uh, go a little deeper uh, to, to, to find these uh, these options to play mutants so uh, they had a lot of beneficial, harmful, powerful and uh, distinctive mutation for your, your mutant and you can even roll on this table uh, right, right in the book and uh, you will have uh, half the chance of uh, being brought back to the core book to roll uh, your uh, mutation so so the, the the table in this book are really inclusive with the uh, the core the, the core core mechanic or the core book so uh, from uh, right there you have the half of the book it's it's 50 page of descriptors and and character types uh, options so the rest of the book are about foci and uh, some are very very cool like uh, battles automatons or uh, or the wor wor worryings uh, constantly evolves or siphon power some are more traditional like it moves like a cat but um, generally foci are really really well done and um, um, Having seen some uh, foci in other books, other PDF, uh, which Monte Cook Games calls glimmers, uh, 
you have a very weird and very very team appropriate um, foci and in, in this case they are more uh, large and open ended for a lot of interpretation and tweaking and uh, customization uh, then you have, and it's a large portion of the uh, second half of the book, then you have optional and additional rules. Uh, mainly it's about uh, making more connections, uh, having more connections stable for your uh, Glaive Nano and Jack. Um, and that's pretty much it. You have uh, rules for uh, uh, buying abilities instead of uh, the traditional uh, ability uh, for your character type. Uh, there is a, a little paragraph on uh, advancing your uh, character uh, once you uh, you gain the sixth, the sixth tier and basically it's just tips on how to advance these, uh, these already super powerful and superior characters and uh, how to deal with them um, th this little paragraph is a little li is a little bit of a letdown for me because I I kind of anticipated this 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 way of doing things uh, because uh, for for example in my campaign uh, most of my player characters will hit uh, the the fifth year soon uh, or just before the next game. So they they are already very powerful, and I have already uh, have done some things to challenge them a little bit more. So uh, I think maybe my next campaign I will uh, maybe give less XP at the end of, of the game f just for good role playing, and I, I'll maybe limit myself to one or or zero. Uh, I'm currently giving a uh, two uh, two XP per session, so maybe uh, we have a slightly faster uh, advancement. But we're approaching uh, 20 games, so it's, it doesn't matter at this point. The rest of the book is very small. You have portraits, character portraits. Uh, I, I will not uh, cut them out from the book, so I don't know how I'm going to use the portrait. I really don't know. You see, I bought, I bought only the, the physical copy, so I, I would have to pay for a PDF just to print uh, the, the, the character portraits so uh, that's maybe a little bit of a waste of page in, in this book but they are pretty so I will not complain and at the end of the book and I, I will hand with, uh, with this you have something very very cool uh, you have some portrait here as you can see they are, they are quite good but I will, I will not disfigure my my book just by cutting the. I can do it. Uh, but this this the character option index, which include every fo foci or focus and descriptors uh, from the core book and the character option. So basically, when you do a character, you can have this in front of you, and uh, that will help you. Uh, have an overview of everything that exists currently uh, in, in the game. So uh, I hope this is uh, useful to you, Rhaegar, and uh, personally I would I would say the, the, the same thing as usual, as usual. This book is not necessary, but the main complaint about Numenera, one, one of the main complaints I, I, I have heard from my players and some people online is that Numenera is maybe a little bit limited on the character creation side of things because the, the, the game is so so light and so um, so easy to tweak uh, so this book is not is not a prerequisite but it may open this door of uh, m more possibilities for your character creation so I hope this video is uh, kind of useful to make up your mind uh, it's not uh, it's not it's it's not pricey but it's very well done it's pretty and uh, I really enjoy it so thanks for watching and I uh, see you next time